Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on economic policy. Today we're going to focus on fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is when the government influences economic outcomes by using the federal budget. When studying the impacts of fiscal policy, the HSC curriculum requires us to look at three aspects. These include economic activity, income distribution, and resource allocation. Last lesson we looked at how fiscal policy influences economic activity. Today we will focus on resource allocation. This outcome is about how the government could allocate resources away from certain industries to other industries that would otherwise be underproduced. One way of approaching this topic is by exploring the concepts that we covered when we studied market failures. You can recap this topic by clicking the links in the description below. The federal government could use the budget to deter resources from some industries by imposing taxes. As you learned from the market failures topic, imposing a tax on a product shifts the supply curve to the left as the price is increased and quantity is decreased. This means that less resources will be allocated to this industry. The government could choose to influence resource allocation like this because there could be negative externalities, such as social or environmental costs that aren't taken into account by the price mechanism. An example is the tobacco excise. The government may impose a tax on cigarettes because of the health issues and pollution that are not taken into account by the low price. The tax increases the price of cigarettes, leading to decreased production, which means that less resources are allocated to cigarette production. Fiscal policy could also allocate more resources into goods and services that are underproduced, such as merit goods and public goods. Merit goods are goods with positive externalities, which are environmental and social benefits that are not taken into account by the price mechanism. So the government can allocate resources to those underproduced goods via subsidies. Subsidies lower the cost of production, shifting the supply curve to the right. The market price is lowered and resources are allocated to this market to produce a larger quantity. This is one of the reasons that the federal government subsidizes solar energy. Reliance on renewable energy sources has social benefits such as cheaper and more sustainable energy in the long term. This subsidy is in effect allocating more resources and increasing the production of solar energy production. Another way that the government could allocate more resources to an underproduced industry is through providing the good themselves, also known as public sector goods. This is often the method for provi- this is often the method for providing public goods, which are goods that the private sector is unwilling to provide because there's no profit to be made, as they're non-excludable and non-rival. An example of a public good provided by the public sector is the military. If it weren't for the public sector, there would be no resources allocated to the military. So those are some examples of how fiscal policy can be used to influence resource allocation. They can take resources from certain industries by using taxes and allocate these resources into other industries by using subsidies and through the public sector. There is one more concept that you can consider using when writing about fiscal policy and resource allocation. In the above, I've focused on fiscal policy being used to allocate resources in order to correct market failures. Another reason that the government would reallocate resources is to increase productivity and efficiency in the long term. For example, the government could allocate resources towards building transport infrastructure. By doing so, time and productivity lost to traffic congestion would be reduced, causing the economy to increase in technical efficiency. This is an increase in aggregate supply, causing our output to increase while price levels fall. Another perspective is this. Because transport infrastructure contributes to increased productivity, it could be considered a capital good. Remember what capital accumulation does to the production possibility frontier of the economy? It shifts outwards, which represents a greater productive capacity of the economy in the long term. In conclusion, what concepts would you use when writing about fiscal policy and resource allocation? You can talk about how fiscal policy uses taxes and subsidies to correct market failures. You can also talk about how the federal budget can allocate resources in a way that increases productivity and efficiency. This increases the long-term productive capacity of the economy. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand fiscal policy and resource allocation. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. In my next video, I'll talk about how fiscal policy influences income distribution. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss any future videos. And I look forward to continuing to make HSA economics easy for you. See you next time.